when I went to go watch the Starling Murmuration, um, the first time I was just overwhelmed. There are a lot of birds up there. So, you know, you draw the first one, you draw the second one, you draw the third one, and it's not feeling like a murmuration, and you're kind of missing the point. Um, and the second time I went to go play with the murmuration, I got this idea, and I wanted to show it to you, and I think it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so we'll first do the murmuration, then we will do the um, turning some birds around, and we'll see if we can add in on top of that just a little bit of winter landscape with some, some depth in it. All right? Let's jump over to the thrill cam. And there we go. All right. Um, so first, that murmuration. The murmuration, wow, it was so much fun. It was so much fun to see. Um, and what it is, is it's this giant kind of freeform squiggle in the sky that does that, and then it does that, and then, you know, it, it just, you know, it keeps changing. And so the, if you're in there and you're kind of drawing bird, 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 by the time you've gotten, you know, this far, there's 30 other different little murmuration shapes that you've missed. And so what I did the second time I was out is I just sort of started, remember when we did those blobbies to help us kind of think about three-dimensional forms? I made just these kind of wireframe murmurations. And so if they're coming, if there's part of it that is coming towards you, then you draw a little oval on that end, right? And then kind of wrap it like that. If it's coming straight at you, you're going to get something like that. Um, and if it's going away from you, make this one going away from you too. Um, so those little kind of wireframe murmurations, and if you want to, you can just in some small part of that, just drop in some little bird dots and just say, you know, have a little note that these things, this, this is just filled with birds. Another thing that was interesting that was happening during it is that there'd be places where it was denser and more spread out. So you can do that just with tone. So if you put in an area of tone into that murmuration blobby, and then in some area here, make it denser. So you're not drawing bird, 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 but you are you're getting a sense of the degree to which this thing has different densities. And lastly, a sense of motion to it. And for that, I'm gonna use diagram arrows. So if this part here that's coming towards me 
Um, and this part here is going off this way. It gives you the sense that this thing is splitting in the middle and this is a denser part, this is a less dense part, and here's the motion in it. So with arrows, the blobbies, and the density, I could actually communicate a lot of stuff about that. One last thing that's kind of fun, since this one is coming towards you and this one is going away, if I want to, I can make this a coming towards you arrow, kind of a little 3D arrow. So that means that on the side that is closest to me on that point there, I'm going to come down from that and but I'm not seeing the back side of those little wings. But on the one that's going away from me. I'm seeing the back side of those wings, so if I want to make those 3D arrows, I can. Why? Because it's fun to draw 3D arrows. So that kind of get, allowed me to get a lot of, so here, whoever asked for starlings, I didn't just draw one starling, I drew 4,000. So there we go, 4,000 starlings, just like that. Right. Um, It's also fun just to make blobbies, right? Just these things as, as abstract shapes, um, they help you think about, we've talked about drawing these things before in terms of thinking about um, visualizing three-dimensional forms. And we're actually gonna be doing that when we're taking birds and, and rocking them um, towards or, or away from us. The general idea of the blobby, if we just kind of have a hot dog, is that the side that's coming towards you, you see that end of the hot dog where it gets tied right there? That's a sausage. And then these ones are going to, so there's a circle, an oval around that, and then these make kind of curves. And what I want to do with these curves is to sort of steepen the curve as it gets towards the edge here. And on the side that's facing away from me, here's another way to make three-dimensional arrows. You can have those be kind of cone arrows. See that this one, you see the back side of it. On that side that's facing away from me, you don't see the oval there. You don't see the, the little circle. But <clears throat> This little blobby form is going to be useful to me to, to be able to draw birds that are, are, are turned around in space. So bird poses other than side views, ones where the body's kind of foreshortened towards you or going away from you. So let's transfer now from our flock to, to thinking about um, to, to, to thinking about birds on the on the ground here. I am going to oh. all right. So if I'm taking this blobby idea and I'm applying it to birds, um, I want to think of, um, actually first let's do just sort of a general foreshortening thing. Let's say I've got a bird and it is sitting at with its back at an angle like this. Note that when this bird turns towards you you see that angle now as a straight line. So a bird that has its back at an angle like this, 
when that bird, and, and so let me just put a little bit of birdness into here. So you see what I'm doing? There's there's the, the, the back of my bird. When this bird turns towards you, that line, if it has a racing stripe painted right down its back, that would be a vertical line. If you could look through a transparent bird, that line would still be going down its back, but it would be vertical. And then the bird would have its body here and its head here. So that means that a bird in a three quarter position, its back angle is going to be somewhere between this angle and this angle. And the closer to, um, the closer it is towards pointing towards you, the more vertical it's going to be. So that same bird could have a back angle like that. And notice that over here, my head is on this side and here my head is in the middle. The more that my head gets towards the middle of this thing, that's also going to be that bird turning towards me a little bit. So as it turns towards me, the head moves more towards the center line, the back becomes more of a vertical. And this oval egg of the body becomes more rounded. So when you look at the bird from the front, that oval of the body is rounded. And so if I see a big oval of the body on the side, it's going to be somewhere between these two in that three quarter view position. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is take a bird in a three quarter view position and I'm going to block out a few major parts of its anatomy. Oh, actually, first, let's turn these guys into blobbies. Um, so if there is, if I'm putting, kind of contour lines around these, it's pretty straightforward for the front ones. But for the three quarter view ones, and we'll get, make this a little bit larger in a moment, that's where I, th I think that things really kind of get interesting. And you also really want to start thinking about what the center line of that body is doing. Let's do this a little bit larger and break down a bird in this three quarter. This is called the three quarter view position. All right, um, let's break that down just a little bit more with kind of some anatomical points. And we'll do kind of, a, we'll play with a little, um, we'll play with a little sort of a sparrow or warbler a passerine shaped bird. And we'll also play with kind of a quail or grousey shaped bird. So from the front here, um, my general body angle is going to be something like this. I'm going to have a head and it's going to attach to a body. I want to avoid having this sort of a thing where I have a bird where there's a body and then there's a head sort of sticking out the end there. I want that head back on top of the body. So I don't want that head hanging off into space there. The head is going to be above the body, but not quite on the center line of it yet.
Um, now I want to think of where the midline, where the center line of this bird is. Um, imagine a bird with a zipper on its bird suit, right? And the zipper goes right up the middle of the bird. Um, so if I put that into this oval here, I am, I have an oval of a body and here is, here's my zipper. That's gonna be the front line of my bird. This head is not just a ball attached to it. The head is going to intersect that body in an arc across that chest. And let's take a look at the shape of this arc a little bit more closely. If I have a ball and it has a center line here and I wrap a line around it, that line hooks up here, comes around here and it's going to hook up again on this side. But you see where this center line passes it? That means that Actually, actually let, me, let me do this without, let's ignore that center line for just a minute. It'll be back in just a moment, All right? See if you're with me with this part here. If I have an egg and here is the, 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 the top of it, All right? Ovals, sort of contour lines here are gonna be wrapping here and hooking up, wrap and hook up on the side hook up there, hook around there. Now, if from this center point, if my midline isn't right down here, but if the tummy of the bird is over here, Now, look at the difference in the shape of this side and this side. This side here is going to, you're, you're already kind of going up into the hook by the time, at the, when you're at the midpoint of this bird's body, you're already hooking up on that side here. On this side, it's going out flat for a while until it gets to that hook up back there. So that means that on any part of this bird um, that is going to kind of come around here where this head sort of fits into the ball, your brain is gonna to want to do this shape. Your brain's gonna to want to do this and make it kind of even. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down. Once we hit that center line, we're gonna hook up like that. So that little hook up there. <clears throat> Let's put the center line up here on the head bird is going to be looking off in this direction. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-sculpt this head. I'm going to re-sculpt this head. Um, because a bird, a little songbird from the front, you often see a little kind of where the ear patch comes in there'll be these little sort of slight flare out of the cheeks, kind of giving it this command module look. All right. So here is this command module of a rocket shape on the head from the front. On the, from the side, the beak sticks out. There's a little bit of a straight throat that comes down. 
and various angles of forehead, but it goes to a rounded back like that. So when you look at this from a three quarter view, on this side over here, you get a little bit of this angle. So you very often get kind of a little bit of this angle here. And on the back side here, because you're turned more towards the side here, you get a rounder head shape. So the two sides of the heads are going to be different shapes. My bird is, um, if it's eye line, beak line is in here, that means its beak is going to attach right in there and its beak is going to be sticking out that way. The eye. We'll be right on that line. Here is my ear patch, eyebrow, and any marks I want to have up on top of the head. Now, on this side of the chest, we can't see the wing because it's wrapped around the side of the body. We're going to get a bunch more chest over on this side. But you probably will get to see, here's a little bit of the back and just here's a little bit of the wing. And I'm not going to put a lot of detail into that because it's turned away from me. It's hard to see detail in on that wing on that side, but no wing on this side. And let's imagine that this bird has some patterns on its chest. We could do that in a bunch of different ways, but this center line here is going to be really, really helpful. So on the center line here, um, if it's got a simple thing like a, a hood of a junco, you're going to come down to that line and then swing it back up. If you've got stripes on the belly, they're going to be symmetrical on either side of that line. And so if um, very often the lower belly is not striped, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in here this area where I don't want stripes to be. All right, so that's going to be my stripe free zone. And so think of very often on, on birds, it'll be kind of an upper part of the chest here. And then stripes coming down the side. So in here, I've got little stripes and bars going symmetrically on either side of that upper breast. And then actually, since I'm putting these kind of stripes in here, I want to turn this guy into more of a finchy thing. So I'm going to give it a bigger base of where the bill is. That's more fun. Now I want to put streaks on the side. These ones on this side are wrapping around the corner.
Another thing you often will see in streaks, if we want to kind of get a little bit more fancy with these streaks, is streaks that are kind of close, the closer they are up at the top, the more kind of uh, crisp they're going to be, especially in this upper breast. And as they kind of get down here, they start to kind of get much sort of looser, more fluffy, cr smaller, crisper feathers up high. So those become more loose down below. Now we want to put a tail on this bird and we want to think of what the tail is going to be doing. So if this is my my bird. Let's come over here. Oh, no, not that way. There we are. All right. So the tail can cock up. The tail is going to pivot from a point kind of down in here. So the tail can kind of can cock up. You have a few little upper tail coverts that will be there. And then the sort of um, bustle of undertail coverts that will smooth into it. That might be kind of doing a wren thing. Let's make this guy kind of more wrenny. Right. Or there, that's sort of thrasher-esque. Right. Or that tail can be more straight in line with the body here, where we'll just kind of, we'll actually step this down slightly here and then my undertail coverts come in like that or that tail can be down further in which case we're going to kind of do this and then some undertail coverts here so again, the upper and undertail coverts, as your tail comes in in our sideways view, above it, there's a zone of feathers that kind of contour you into the body, upper tail coverts, and below it, not necessarily coming to the same point, often a little bit further out, you'll have undertail coverts that will stick out under the tail. So we're going to decide for this little character here, which position its tail is going to be in. And um, so let's, uh, you know, if, if this is, is my, my, my ball, it's, uh, my tail is going to be, and if this is sort of the, sh imagine this as being at 90 degrees to this little um, center line here. I'm going to want to keep my pair, my, I want to imagine that line kind of coming up behind here, going to that other little dot on the other side. Um, Jack, and, could you please yes. raise up your drawing a little oh, bit? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, there we go. There we go. Right. So let, let me, so because I was doing all this kind of off screen and going like this line goes to here, this line goes to here, and this line, blah, 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 blah. Let me just kind of redoodle this over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how kind of what is the angle that I want my tail to be coming out. I mean, I already figured it out just from that drawing. Let's see if we can refocus. All right, so check this out. <clears throat> Here is my body oval. And we've talked about how if this is kind of the axis of that, we looked at how we're gonna hook around the sides, we're gonna hook around the sides, hook around the sides. And then we 
we instead of having the center line here, our bird's tummy is going to be pointing this way. And so it's then disappearing behind the scenes to some point somewhere in there on the backside. Right, if you had 3D specs, you'd see this line coming around and starting to wrap around the far side. Um, now, I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to this. And that's going to be, you know, imagine my bird's head up here, right? That's where, you know, my bird's eyes are. I'm going to draw just a line that cuts across this as it comes in here at 90 degrees. All right, so coming across the top. And then I'm resting this little bar. If I were to wrap that 90 degree line around this way, it would probably get something like that, right? But I'm just going to put this floating in space, not bending it, not curving it. That is the angle that I want the base of the tail to be attached at. And I've never taught this in any of my classes. So this is the first time you guys are seeing this. I'm starting to think about kind of content for another book on drawing birds or part du. But this line perpendicular to that belly line, if you wrap that up, it's easier to visualize that here. And then this line, it's gonna be it's going to be in line with that. And then the tail is going to come out from that. And the tip of the tail is going to be at this same angle. Never before seen. Now, if this is the middle of that tail, I'm going to have undertail coverts coming down and covering up part of that. You see, the undertail coverts, um, if we trace where they're going to attach onto the tail here, it would be coming down like this to that center line and then coming back up here. But from this point out here, you're not seeing that far side there you're not seeing that far side of where the undertail coverts attach because between you and that is um, the fluff. So that's, if you could see through it, it would be a three-dimensional thing like that. But so this line and this line at slightly different angles. So let's do that with this. We've kind of come up here, gives me kind of an angle like that somewhere where that. I have to move the screen again. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. So I'm doing the same thing right up here. That angle, I trace it off here. Undertail coverts are coming up like that. So it's more poofy on the inside side down steeper, and then out more. And if I trace that center line down this, it would be doing something like this. And then <clears throat> here is my tail sticking down. Now the tail, if it's squared off, can be squared off. If there's a notch in the tail, you're going to see that notch like that. So what we're doing here is we're sort of taking this bird form and we're rolling it around in our head so that we can, um, we'll be able to draw this bird then from all sorts of, of different angles. Its legs 
are going to come out generally in this area here. But there isn't a specific point where those legs have to come out. You've actually got some flexibility and some wiggle room. Um, because that leg inside view, it's attached to a hip that is attached to a knee that you can't see, that is attached to a tibia fibula that is partially buried in the, the bird's feathers. Doc, could you, um, could you please oh. lower the camera a bit? Thank you. <laughs> right, hip, knee, heel. So here's the tibia fibula and the bird's tarsus then attaches to that. That's like your instep. So this is the bird's heel right there. And then usually you've got three toes forward, one toe going back on that bird's foot. But because you can bend this joint and bend this joint and bend this joint, this um, if this knee comes up higher and this goes back further here, right? Then you're going to have the foot coming back out at a different place and you're just seeing part of the tarsus. So you may see part of this little heel or you may not. Because here, the heel's hidden in the feathers. Here, um, the heel is exposed out. But you notice that where this comes in, this first leg is attaching. Let's zoom in on that a little bit more. Whoop. Nope. There. All right. So this first, here we go. This first one, knee, heel, the heel is sticking down. And when that happens on the underside of the bird, you'll see the belly of the bird. And there'll be this little fuzzy heel that sticks down. And then the, the scaly tarsus attaches to that. Oops, I'm off the screen again, just like that. So here's this little fuzzy heel sticking down, right? But it also could just like this, it could be like this whole part could be hidden under the feathers. The fe you could just see something like this. Here's the feathers of the bird. And you just have this little tarsus sticking out of that. So one of those two, and we can put that onto this bird here. Do I want to have it legs tucked up more or do I want to have it um, kind of more out? Well, I'm gonna make this one a little bit more out. I'm gonna have a little tarsus kind of coming down here. Think of this as a little cone sticking out here. And this one here is gonna be coming out here, but it's gonna be pointing towards you a little bit more. So I can make them different lengths. Now this one here, I am going to draw it down. And so its foot will be here. And this other one, it's going to draw down and its foot is going to be in here. And notice I made that leg shorter. Huh? What's up with that? Okay. This leg is pointed towards you. This leg you're seeing more on the side. So I can have these legs be in this three quarter view, really different sizes. And then what I'll do is I'll draw a little stick that goes between those feet. So I usually draw my feet first and then draw in the stick that's going to go between them. So you come down, you come out. I'm going to see this little foot coming back here. Back claw is going to hang off that side. Toes going to come down here. And they don't have to grab that branch super tight. You can have that foot kind of loosely wrapped around there. Here's a little claw sticking down, a few toes hanging down here. I don't think I think I want this. 
There we go. So that gives me a few strategies for visualizing this foreshortened bird. And uh, it's, it's kind of fun to, to, to play with these and to, to think of like, where is your center line going to be going? Um, Now let's think about a grouse or a quail. Um, so I'm going to um, <clears throat> I'm going to play with the idea of of a of a sooty grouse. Um, and these are really neat birds um, when they do their little vocalizations. Um, they have these uh, pouches that they'll inflate and uh, they make these really really deep 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 sounding uh, <laughs> noises um, and then those those um, those 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 pouches deflate and they're looking you know, a, a lot more like a self-respecting um, uh, you know, ground bird. Um, let me zoom back out and get to some free real estate on my page. There we go. And what I want to do is to think about how its shape is also going to be changing as it gets to um, a three quarter view. Um, so the, the first thing I'm going to do is just a little grouse view um, side, and then we're gonna rotate that um, three, three quarter. So if I'm just thinking of this bird um, from the side, Uh, let's see. Um, I'm thinking of its. You often, if you've sketched with me before, I often start by putting in kind of the negative shape behind its its back. Um, I then can hang a little head from that, and then I will hang, um, sort of drop um, a big body onto that. A grouse that's displaying will have this extra bulge right in here as it is um, that's, that, those, those, uh, the vocal sacs and the feathers that puff out um, around those. But uh, that is kind of a, a rough shape for Grouse, so little tiny beak. And then it has that big vocal sac. In display, they drop their wings, they droop their wings down. And fan their tail. And they go walking around. So there's a little grouse. Now I want to take this bird and I'm going to rock it around for more of a three quarter view. All right. um, and this will be fun. So um, let me see, I wanna make sure my, I'm still on, do I have all the space here? Yes, I do. So from a three-quarter view, 
this kind of angle here, it's going to be much more steep. And what you've got is a big ball of a body, a big ball of a vocal sac on top of that, and then um, a little bit, actually this is more, this is a little bit too centered. All right, so what do I need to do if I want to make this looking off to the side? I'm gonna take this ball that is too much centered here, and I'm just gonna move it to the right a little bit. And on that, I'm gonna have the head move to the right a little bit. Now, here is the center line. of that little shape. All right. <clears throat> so from, and if I think about that, like we'll deal with the tail in just a moment. The tail will be fine. The tail will be cool. Um, What I want to do now is to just to block in a few other kind of uh, sort of key pieces. My bird is going to be looking in this plane. So its beak is going to attach from this area here. And grouse have short little beaks. So its little beak is going to be, sorry about that. Got to remember to silence this thing. The eye is on that same line there. And the grouse have, in addition to those sort of uh, vocal sacs with the, where there's actually a big kind of exposed skin patch, they have these um, two <laughs> masses of skin that can inflate with get engorged with blood and stick up on top of their head, which is just cool. So I've got the short side of the head and the round side of the head. So the flattened side of the head over here if I can, I'll get my here with the eraser. So just sort of notice the difference in the shape of the head on this side and this side, rounded here, for the same reason that we have, we saw that on the, the passerines. Um, then down here into this, this pouch, there's a black strip that goes down the, the, the front of it. And so that is then going to hook up on this side here. And we'll see a few little kind of white fluffy feathers there. On the close side, it comes down and it starts to hook up, but not as steeply because we don't really kind of get that steep start of the hook up until you get further out towards the side. And this whole business is black. And then there's an exposed skin patch that's inside that. Its belly, that black sort of uh, stripe down the belly is going to kind of continue through. This is the middle of the belly, right? This whole area here on this side and this side. And then 
it's going to have its legs sticking down here. And it's going to be tempting to put legs in like that. But a couple things. One, we have this three quarter view. And also, if it's walking around, um, as it's walking around, it's actually putting one foot in front of the other. So very often from a uh, three quarter position, you'll see these legs doing this really kind of crazy kind of catwalk crossover. And then grouse have their, their toes are covered with feathers. So they've got feathered toes down here. But you can get, I'm going to have them crossing over like that. Or if I want to even get more of a kind of crazy crossover. Here's this other. Lastly, the um, if this is um, on the back here, my tail is going to be coming out sort of in there. I'm going to have more tail sticking up on this side than this side. The tail, as it fans, um, can go it can go much further out um, when they display the, the the tail can come all the way out this way. So if I want to, I can also bring this down this way. But there is there's that big tail in the background. I would recommend on that tail not drawing in all the feathers like we did on the cap or Kaylee. Um, what I can do is in the middle, just kind of give you a few kind of guide feathers that are going to say like this is the kind of direction this is going. And then you can, in the shape of the edge of this, you put in a few notches and those are pointing towards a little point right back here. So rather than having, watch this, I'm going to do it wrong and then I'm going to fix it and do it right. So watch, if I come here, all right, see how this feather then would be coming down somewhere over here, this one coming down there, this one. I want these feathers to, I want to point the little notches between where you might see these different feathers towards a little target just about here on my bird. So I kind of come in here and then this one. And these ones on the far side are going to do the same thing. That will get my feathers aligned. The outside edge of them. Is more lightly colored. And so there are some of those same ideas of thinking about this uh, this grouse, instead of from a straight side view, taking this sphere, stacking it on top of this sphere, stacking it on top of this sphere, and seeing those from the side as a set of nested spheres with their own center line. And that is a murmuration and a foreshortened bird, uh, two foreshortened birds. Did not get around to marshes in wintertime. 
uh, but it is now on my radar. So let's first check in and see if there are any questions that people have specifically about what we've looked at today. Um, and then we'll jump over to just a little bit of uh, journal sharing. Um, but if there is, um, if there is a, a, a question that somebody has specifically about what we're, we're looking at here, I want to invite you just to drop that into um, uh, a... um, there's a question in here about whether circling vultures are similar to murmurations. Also, just to address that, oh, yes, oh. yes, there were some people who were spamming the chat and we removed all of those members. Oh, to our thank you for doing that. Um, Brian and I did, yeah. Good job, you guys. Um, good job. Well, um, that's the first time that I'm aware of um, that we've had that. I just was browsing down the chat and uh, I'm, I, I apologize uh, to everybody for that. That's that I write. And thank you so much, um, um, Brian and Avea, for being on top of that. Yeah, you guys got her back. Um, so a uh, question was about uh, circling uh, vultures similar to a murmuration. Um, really not so much um, because they, they are, they're all floating on top of a, a mass of rising air, but they each will be kind of doing their own thing in that. So there's no coordinated flight between them. So um, the, uh, so, Um, so you you won't get that that same um, sort of let's see if I can find those little murmurations. Yeah, you won't you won't get these sort of. Um, it looks like they, they, it's sort of uh, much more akin to looking at a school of fish. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, somebody's just po uh, posted the um, a, a video. Um, to that in the chat where you can see the, um, thank you, Anne, um, for, for sharing that. All right. Um, are there any other questions before we kind of go to the group share? All right, let's allow people now to, um, unmute themselves. And because we've had that little spammer in there, um, um, Brian and Avia, are you guys familiar with kind of how to uh, freeze a Zoom meeting when, if somebody does, somebody acts out? Never done that before. I don't know how. Um, neither have I. Um, so let's um, we're going to have our, our, our finger on the trigger. Um, I'm going to ask Brian and, and, um, uh, and, and, and Avea, um, to sort of uh, be ready, but we are now going to allow people to unmute themselves, um, and allow participants to unmute themselves. Yes. All right, you can now unmute yourself. Um, and what we're, I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to the gallery view. And um, all right, yeah, they're under security. Um, let's see. Suspend participant activities. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do here. <laughs> so I'm nervous now. Um, I like it better when everybody's being nice. Um, so if you would like to share a journal page, hold it up uh, to your screen. And um, later on, we'll turn off the recording. And then we will, um, and, and we will, here we go. Um, Sharon, I see you've got a journal page that you'd like to, to share. I'm going to invite you to, um, there we go. Oh. So um, this past weekend, um, 
uh, Brian had uh, J.P. Painter um, do a val you know, teach us about values. And so I, this is what she drew and I followed along. And then when I went into my treasure box and pulled out some of my things that, um, some shells that I had, and I kept, I wanted to do it just in one color with values, but I just couldn't figure out how to do it until I did it in color. And then I could kind of do it in just one uh, color, you know, just one color with just changing values. That was really a stretch for me. And um, I noticed like the color version that I did, the dome of the shell just wasn't right. So when I did it in the just the simple value drawing, I tried to make the dome more accurate. And I have the shell I used right here. So I'm going to hold it up. And this is the one I used oh. as my model. So, but that was, that was a wonderful exercise, you know, and it was, you know, she really talked about um, going, you know, in with darks and just layering over and over and over again to achieve the, um, the darker areas. It was, it was a, Brian, it was just lovely. I really enjoyed um, that session. I want to thank you so very much for it. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, JP. And also thank you so much for sharing that with us, Sharon. That's really cool to see. It's really interesting to see that when we do multiple drawings of the same subject, you can see your brain in your pencil just starting to wrap around that subject better and better and better and better. Yeah, yeah, I had to, I had to do it several times before I could kind of figure it out. Then because I was in the treasure box, looking at those things, I came across a sand dollar I had picked up on uh, a Georgia sea, um, uh, sea Island trip that I had taken by kayak. And so I did that and I picked it up on this beach, which is called Boneyard um, Beach on Wassa Island. And this was, this is the map with the title estuaries. Oh, fun. Um, yeah. So that it, this was a really long time ago, <laughs> but huh. going into this box and finding these treasures just brought all these memories back. And so. Um, and I like how you're collaging that map into the page. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's a really so good I was, thing. Yeah. So that little, like um, you talked on, I think educators forum about you maybe using circles and you know and like this is the expansion of that area of the beach mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. where you know, where the um the trees have fallen because of erosion they're bleached and weathered and that's why it's called the boneyard that's really fun yeah cool. I, I love it <laughs> thank you um and uh, so uh, do you know if the, the, the presentation with JP, was that recorded? No, it wasn't. It was her first time going through that material. And I, oh, that's cool. I think she cool. wanted to do it as a draft. That's, that's great. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing that, Sharon. Yeah. Really. My pleasure. Um, all right, let's, I'm gonna jump back to gallery view. If there's anybody else that would like to share, uh, I see, uh, I will first go to Tracy and then over to Ray Bonto. Um, Tracy, good to see you. Good to see you too. Wigging out on the foxes. Oh, fox time. Oh, what fun. I love to do the fuzzy, although I don't know if I have a very speedy technique because I think I literally do every brush stroke. But, um, really trying to do some washes here to get the nice rock and just love doing the eyes and the, the fur. I mean, I really enjoyed the Fox two-part lesson. Um, uh, aren't, aren't they, they're so much fun. And you really do get the fuzzy inside the ears on these too. Yeah. Uh, the, you had some good tips with putting in the dark 
instead of the white. And then I washed over with a little bit of pink because there was just a touch of pink in there. Um, and I also, I like the, um, just in terms of, of textures, we've got the sky texture, the rock texture, very, very different than the, um, than the, the fox textures. And having those, give, the contrast of those on the page really um, helps them, help pops it. This is just so sweet. This is so sweet. I think I'm, I'm, she might be listening, but I'm going to try to see if my sister, whose last name is Foxall, will buy this with a donation to the Urban Life. Either that or I might have to give it to her with a donation to the Urban Life Wildlife Project. So, oh, that's uh, great. So, crazy. Thank you so much. And also, isn't it neat to see how that piece of artwork then can uh, sort of fold itself into um, stewardship? as yeah. the donation goes to support wildlife. That's yeah. really sweet. Thank you very much. And I wanted to say to um, Evea that I, I felt like I kind of, like when I raised my hand, I was like, yes, I'm gonna do that on my birthday, which is coming up next month. And I we're pretty like iced down in a snow block right now. Um, and I have trouble with my back on the uneven. so. I basically just picked up people's recycling that falls out when the truck comes. That was my immediate thing. But I think I'll have something a little bigger for my birthday that she inspired me to do service for. Well, some people may not have heard that whole whole discussion. Give people a bit of the backstory there because that's really a it's a wonderful thing. Well, Avea celebrated her birthday like a week and a half ago. Is that about right? And. Yep. I said that like she said that the, her way of celebrating is to do um, service to the earth by cleaning a beach by herself or sometimes if people come along then more the merrier and it was just a really touching thing for her to share with us and I said oh, I'm going to do that on I'm going to do that too and I meant like my birthday is in February and I'm going to do a nice project figure something out but then we all went into we're doing it now and I'm like I don't know what I'm going to do in the snow, <laughs> which had kind of gotten a layer of ice. And, um, but uh, I went out after garbage day, the recycling and some other stuff always doesn't always make it in. So that was my replacement for something as awesome as a beach was just some stuff around the neighborhood. That everything that you do helps. So thank you for doing that. That that is that is kindness and that is service. And thank you so much. And please let us know when your birthday is so that we can honor your birthday too by doing something um, to, to honor your day as well, please. Thank you. That's, I will. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Evea, your birthday keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fun. Hey, thank you. Thank, thank you both. Um, let's find, let's see, Ray Bonto. Um, there you are. Um, I'm gonna spotlight you for everyone. Good to see you again. Yeah, um, so I decided to um, do the stuff and it got really messy. And, um, yeah, I'm not, um, um, the layout gets always a bit, you know, um, but still. Um, uh, so I decided to do a very weird shape for this. Um, uh, I mean, it does happen, but. <laughs> Yeah. And then I uh, did the other birds, and also I decided to do some colored pencil here. You see it? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, and I also decided to use some colored pencil, but yeah, 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 poor quality, but uh, they're quite hard and nice. Uh, well, yeah. this, this, what, what I'm so first of all. Um, you called it messy. I call it energetic. And so this is just filled with like trying this, trying this, trying this, putting all those things next to each other. This is exactly the energy that you want to have going on because it just gives you permission to fill this page with the next gesture and the next gesture and the next gesture. And that's fun to do. And, um, and the, and as I look through the diagrams that you have, you've created here and the constructions that you've made, you've, you've captured all the key points here and I can see them 
in your diagrams. This is yeah, exactly what we should be doing. Yes, I also decided to do some fun thing for the hot dog. I decided to do a whole hot dog and then, you know, <laughs> go, it's going inside someone's mouth. <laughs> ah, oh, that's really fun. Oh, it's making me hungry. I love the degree of the 3D mapping that you drew on that murmurization. Yeah. It's really detailed. I, I agree with I you, Tracy. I feel like I could almost put it in my hands just by seeing it in your, your picture. It, isn't that fascinating? It, it turns this, what would just be kind of an outline shape, he's really defining the corners and the, the, the boundaries, the angles of that. So much fun. And I agree with yeah. Anne, love the rockets too. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's different. Um, and I also, also the, the one where you dropped in that little bit of tone, maybe in dathrone blue behind that grouse. That's really cool. Just pops that thing out. Uh, no, uh, it's not in dathrone blue. It's on um, this. Oh, so, yep. Yep, yep, uh, yep. Yeah, those are just junior pencils, but uh, it's some ultramarine color, but mm. I like it. Dark indigo. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So then, um, I guess. Um. Uh, Willow ptarmigan. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Willow ptarmigan. Yes. Yeah, the Willow ptarmigan. Um. That yeah. um, and this is um, that also reminds me of drawings of Bill Berry. This is from there. Yes, I love that 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 study. Really cool, isn't it? Fun to 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 examine his lines. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's cool, boy! You um, you are handling that paint so uh, so well. It's just it's just all of these these tests and pages and pages and pages, we can really see your paint application growing dramatically um, over the last, just the last few months. Huge jumps. Yes, I also decided to put a little um, bit of gouache here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm, so uh, you can see over there. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's fun to have uh, to be able to add white on top of that surface. It is. Um, you know, it's also challenging. Always, I always find I put the gouache down, and I say to myself, "It looks great," and then it dries, and it dries more transparent. And all of a sudden, I thought like I thought it was much more opaque, and then the minute the gouache dries, it becomes more transparent. Did you have that experience too? Uh, just now I noticed it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 the gouache, um, yeah, it, it, you put it down on your paper. What it does when it dries will, will be different. So we have to keep our eyes on that rascal. Yeah, you need to layer it again. Yes. Um, for that reason, I wanted toned paper. And now I decided that toned paper was a bit too. You know, uh, and and then uh, I this palette came and it had more quality gouache than mine and and then I said, oh no, why did I get white paper? <laughs> uh, well, it's it, it's good to cross train, play with toned paper, play with white paper, and um, you know you're gonna learn both. You're gonna learn different things on all of the. Where did that come from? Oh, anyways. I don't know. Oh. Anyways, uh, whatever. Uh, so yeah, oh. I also had another idea. Yes. Um, if you don't have space in your bag uh, for your curiosity kit, and your bag is full of art materials, rather, you uh, if you have, um, you could take your zip. And you, if you have one, a small pocket handbag, a small one like that, 
Um, and you could hang it. So this is my bag, and you could hang it on the zip uh, like that. Oh, that's a good strategy. Yeah. Yeah, and if it doesn't um, attach, like this is not attachable, nor is the zip. You could use, you could double hook something that is like this. That's a really good thing to remember. I like that. Then also anything you put in that external bag, um, it's there right when you need it. Yep. That's fun. Hey. Thank you. Hey, thank you. It's really good to see you again. It's really good to see you again. Yeah. That's fun. Um, are there any other folks who would like to share one of their journal pages? Okay. <clears throat> oh, Walters, um, let's join you. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you too. So can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yeah, so uh, the day yesterday, um, I was drawing some, so therefore there, uh, there were no birds in the forest uh, and I was skiing, cross country skiing, and I started to draw some cones. And I never have drawn cones before. So this is like the first one that I drew and I was wondering, maybe somebody knows these, this kind of cone, they're like the, uh, I don't know what these are called, the petals maybe? The, uh, like, scale. uh, the scales. Yeah, uh, on, this, on this cone, they go down, downwards, like pointing to the ground. But then I, I found a different tree with different kind of cones. And these ones were point, pointing upwards. So I asked the question, maybe, maybe somebody knows uh, this cone was hanging in a tree. And I was asking the question, does it drop its seeds while hanging in the tree? And this one drops its seeds when like, because this one had its, uh, those uh, petals upwards. And this one had it, had it downwards. So, so, what? How? How do? You... Oh, that is that's a really interesting question. Um, my 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 first okay. answer is I don't know. Um, I know that lots of cones will open while they're on the tree, and they the the ones that hang down. I know that things like fur. Uh, that on um, fir trees, the, the cones, the upright cones will, the scales will fall apart and fall off, leaving just a central spike or core. Um, and, um, and I don't know on, on this one, did, on that upright one, did the scales on it, could those be easily pulled off? Or were they pretty hard in there? Mm. I think they were pretty hard, but on this one, they were kind of closed up. They weren't open. They were okay. still in the tree, but they were they were pretty closed up. But there were, as you can see, there were so, so many of them in like a one branch. But this one, uh, this one was still hanging uh, in the tree also, but they were like kind of separate. And these ones are pretty big. So it's about... Uh, 10 centimeters, this one. So this one's pretty big. This one was smaller, but yeah, it just was interesting that these were in, these ones were kind of hanging down and these ones are uh, like going upwards. So yeah. I'm gonna have to find that uh, out somehow. That's, that is really cool. Um, and something that you're doing that I want to point out to everybody, actually, I was just yesterday making a video about, um, I, I was just making a video about this, uh, doing something very similar to the strategy that you are, you're doing on this page. Um, you're, you've got two cones side by side. And because you've got two cones going side by side, 
the features of one that are different than the other really help focus our attention on the, on the characteristics of these things. If you're just drawing a cone, the whole idea of thinking, you know, pointing up, pointing down, it might not occur to you. But when the minute you're doing two things like this that are in the same category, but different species, side by side, these sorts of questions will come out and dance with you in a totally different way. So you've done what, what I call a, a joint comparison here. And this mm -hmm. is a really useful strategy that I want to encourage other people in the group to do. You're, you're out there, you're kind of, you're, you're skiing around, you're looking at whatever it is, rather than looking at, let's say there's shorebirds. And you're thinking like, okay, I'm gonna do a study of the shorebird. I'm gonna study the, um, I'm gonna look at the, the avocet. That will be okay, that'll be interesting, right? But if you do a side-by-side -side comparison of the avocet versus the stilt, or the avocet versus the curlew, right? Then oh, all sorts of other connections will start to form and start to be made, just like you have uh, that you're like, just like what you're seeing right here. That is, that's really cool. That's really cool. Thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you for sharing that that joint comparison. I really want to encourage other people try those uh those those joint comparisons the the trip that it will take your brain on is really interesting all right let's see um and um i'm going to bring you up hey there hello um so i'm revisiting spiky stuff and uh this is based on a I think it's a liquid amber seed pod, right? Yeah. And so, oh, that messed up. Yeah, just trying to get the dark values in those nooks and crannies and get the sort of roundness of it. And um, I had done one two months ago. I just realized it's two months ago today that maybe wasn't as well defined. So, oh, interesting. Let's see those side by side. Go kind of. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. That's so, neat. much more kind of articulate description of the structure. The other one kind of gives you a general sense of patterns in light and dark. But on this new one, we really see the structure much more clearly. Yeah. So that was my little project yesterday. Just something to do. Good old spiky balls. Who, who could Good go old wrong? Spiky balls. <laughs> and, and and also the um, that the you're punching in those darks and some of those nooks and crannies in those spaces between, and that yeah. really um, by going to eleven with the depth there and with with the, with the darkness there, it really makes this uh, sparkle. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, um, friends, uh, thank you all for joining us here. And I hope you uh, got some great strategies out of this workshop that will help you be able to play with those, those birds. I want to encourage people to try, try your hand at um, just sort of playing with this sort of three-dimensional modeling, make up a bird, turn it at an angle, and, and, and sort of uh, uh, drop them uh, and, and see what, what you can do with, with creating bird poses and positions at different angles. Um, that's really, really fun. Um, these workshops are supported by donations from viewers like you. If it's possible to make a donation to support me in this work, I greatly appreciate that, and my family does too. Um, if that doesn't work with your, um, your, 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 your funding um, or lifestyle right now, I totally get that. These are really, really weird times which we're in. I want you to know, I want you to be here. I want you to keep coming, and but see if... Um, instead of a donation, if there's an act of service or kindness in your community, in your neighborhood, that you can do in a way that's still keeping you safe, 
um, but just adds a little bit, one more kind of light of kindness into our community. Uh, we really need that right now. Um, at least over here in the United States, we're, um, we're, we're kind of a, an, an Ouroboros, um, a, a snake eating its own tail. And the, we, instead of seeing people who disagree with us as, as our neighbors who disagree with us, um, we think of them as enemies. And the more that we can kind of reach out with acts of kindness and also acts of kindness to people who disagree with you. Um, when you do that, when you treat people who disagree with you with, with kindness, it, it changes you and makes us actually much more, even if, if they don't appreciate it, <laughs> um, and they probably do, um, it changes you and makes it easier for the next time um, you're encountering somebody that disagrees with you to, 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 to also sort of meet them on the level of encountering a human being um, rather than a, than a symbol or an object. 